Hey everybody, it's Jessica at Pretty Prints in Paper, and it's been a minute since I've done a lettering video, but a couple of folks were saying that they had trouble with certain letters doing brush calligraphy, so I thought I would just show you how I draw these letters. It's on my Instagram story, and several of you uh, shared some of the same difficulties with letters that I have had. So I am going to be modeling them with two different brush markers. This one is the Zig Brushable. I love these for beginners and they have a very different kind of ink than Tombow's and other water-based inks. It's a pigment ink, which means that it's going to be light fast, waterproof, fade proof, they don't bleed, etc, etc. And they're about the same price. And then there's this other small brush pen, which is the Le Pen Flex by Marview Uchida and these are amazing. The color is so bright and these little tips are sort of like the oh I guess it's not going to focus but the little tips uh, remind me uh, a lot of like a Tombow soft tip and then gives you a similar shape. So I will model with both of these. The first letter that I'm going to be doing is the letter E and honestly it took me four years to feel good about the letter E and even now when there's two of them I am just screwed because there's something about this letter that is so difficult. So E's you start in the middle, come up and then start to press down and then immediately let up and come up. So this angle determines a lot when you do an E and you'll notice that this is kind of up kind of diagonal, whereas other folks will draw an E that's more circular. So like, so this comes out more instead of diagonal up. See that difference? So that will determine kind of the size of your letter. So play around with that and see which one you like because they kind of fit into your hand a little bit differently depending on which one. And the key is that when you change pressure, you want to make sure that there is thick on one side and thin on the other. So you see that this kind of halfway in between the curve and then halfway in between the curve here. So the reason why the E really gave me a hard time for a long time is that I always dumped all the weight on the bottom. I would not remember to lift up my pen or I would not lift it up fast enough because I was getting sloppy or doing it too fast. And it just put so much weight here. And I can't remember who calls it this. Maybe it's Becca, the happy ever crafter, uh, who calls it the soggy bottom. So you want to make sure that you actually start lifting up much earlier right up here to get that. Um, and then the hardest part, honestly, is doing double of these because then you can see how inconsistent they are from one another. Um, with a smaller pen, okay, press down and then immediately let up or more round. The more round gives, gives off a little more playful vibe than the more, you know, classy, sassy uh, E with the diagonal there, the smaller one. And frankly, if you are having trouble with letters that curve like this, make them bigger. So using a blank sheet of paper has been really, really great for me because then I'm not really focused on staying in the lines. The more curves there are in a letter, the bigger that you want to make it so that you can kind of get the form down with your uh, lettering. Okay, so the next one that was by far the most challenging for folks is the letter K. And I will tell you, there are so many, so many iterations of this letter that I've tried. And I uh, have finally, in the fifth year, found one that I really like. So in the past, I will do K's like this. Okay, notice how I'm picking up my pen every single stroke? Yeah. Um, and it looks like a weird R, right? So, um, you know, there's variations of this with the, you know, ascending loop. I just never really liked those. So actually the one that I do now is more like a print with a swoop. So that looks like this. 
down stroke, and then come back like that. So brings it back and then keeps it thin across. So even though you're kind of coming down here, I don't add pressure so that it keeps the weight balanced. If there's too much weight in letters here, it just makes it hard to read and it doesn't look good. So this is a more playful letter K perhaps than, you know, the more traditional copper plate calligraphy, but I just find it to be easier to draw, more consistent for me. And so it doesn't look like an R. And again, you're going to have a lot more ability to maneuver with the small brush pen. When in doubt, pick up your pen. One person said H's and N's, so I'll just show you the H because they're both basically the same. The H is in two steps. The downstroke and then the compound curve. Or you can also add that loop and then the compound curve. One of the major tips that I give beginners around the letter H and M and N is that you start that second stroke all the way down here. Like don't cheat and start up here. You can just tell the difference between that just like elegant upstroke afterwards because it just looks um, incomplete. I don't know, it looks more like a print thing than it is like a calligraphy thing. So if that is what's tripping you up, that's one of the recommendations that I usually make is to start at the bottom. But in like play around with how far out this goes, sometimes people really like a lot of space. They like to like compress the curve. So playing around with that style. Next letter is the letter J. And this one's in my name, so I had to get really good at it. So the J, I think, can be challenging for people with uh, who use their right hand because you're going against the brush, which is, I mean, what left-handed folks do for most of the letters. But when you're pushing against, I think that can be challenging to get the right uh, pressure and the right smoothness of the stroke because you'll see that it starts to thin out here. So trying to lighten up earlier so that it has a chance to get down here because remember you want the thick on this side and the thin on this side so you need to give it a chance you wouldn't just be biking and all of a sudden slam the brakes you're going to slow down for that curve so that is the J and there's only one curve on it so it can be somewhat easy to do and I'm not doing any uppercase because honestly I got through so many years without doing any uppercase letters. Lowercase b, Mark had this issue and probably because there's a lot of curving to it but you stop with the downstroke and then next to it you'll set the reverse oval. So you start at that nine o'clock and then I like to do a little swoop here you can, of course, do that really, like, classic, elegant exit stroke, but I, I like the loops. So uh, you can also do the more, like, loopy one. But I find that for me, starting at that 9 o'clock and then going forward really helps. And again, this is a really curvy letter. So if you are having a hard time getting the form right, make it bigger and just practice with getting the muscle memory down before you start shrinking it. Z, maybe again with all the curves, it's challenging. What's challenging about Z, to be honest, is connecting it to a bunch of other letters because you have to know that it's coming in order to smoothly enter into it. For a lack of a better word choice, I, I suppose I'm just gonna do like Aztec, for example. Like you have to know that you're going into uh, a Z. So you know that A is gonna go into Z. This stroke has to flow right into the Z. So I think that is what can get challenging about it. So here's the E. Okay, 
the last one that I will do is the letter S. And I think the letter S is super challenging for a lot of people, especially beginners, because it's super curvy. So the one that I was doing in particular looks kind of like a print because it can double easier than some of the other ones. So this one looks like that. It's more playful, it's simpler than and, and less formal. So I it's hard because again you have so many curves right so there's a lot of changing pressure and being a little bit more delicate around when you're going to be pressing down and especially when you're going to be letting go and i know you've never thought this hard about you know drawing letters or anything like that but it becomes really challenging uh if the, you're not paying attention to pressure so making sure that again with these big uh, loopy letters to make them giant. This is like a two inch letter. And again, here you can play around with how much you curve each aspect. And if you're not getting that thick or thin, one of the other troubleshooting pieces is making sure that your pen is parallel between the top and the bottom of your piece of paper. Um, if you're holding it like this, you are just not going to see the really lovely difference between the thick and the thin. So anytime you catch yourself going back to your handwriting posture, you have to just come back up onto the side. So those are a couple of the challenging letters that I heard from you all. What letters are giving you a hard time? Let me know in the comments. If was this helpful? Uh, were the, any of the tips particularly uh, clarifying for you? Or are you still stuck? Uh, what are the questions that you have? Let me know down below and I will answer them as best as I can. If you like it, go ahead and subscribe, share, whatever. But I just hope that you enjoy. I will see you next time. Bye.